Welcome back, Dram Fam, to another episode on the Whiskey Diary. So you're here because you want to know more about the weird and wonderful world of New Make Spirit? Let me explain. So, what exactly is New Make Spirit? Well, basically, New Make Spirit is just whiskey before it's whiskey. The Scotch Whiskey Association have some rules that define what exactly whiskey is. That is a spirit that can be made from nothing more than cereals, yeast, and water. It must be aged in a oak barrel in Scotland for a minimum of three years. It must be bottled at no less than 40%. It must be distilled no higher than 94.8%. That's in order to preserve the, I can't remember the exact word, it's like to preserve the natural aromas and flavors of the spirit. And it can contain no additives other than caramel E150A. So what you actually get coming off the still is a colorless, high ABV liquid usually comes off around between 65 and 70 percent. Now once that liquid goes into a cask it starts to take on additional flavors. A lot of people say that that's anywhere from 40 to 80 percent of the final flavor of the whiskey that you drink. There are lots of variables in that cask which contribute to that flavor such as the type of oak of which it's made the location of the cask and what was in the cask previously and how the cask was treated before the spirit went in it. Obviously there's a lot to do with toasting and recharring and you've got shaved, toasted and recharred casks, stuff like that. And all of those actions on that cask have an effect on the final flavor of the whiskey. But a lot of the decisions made during the distillation process and before will have a profound impact on the spirit that goes into the cask. There are tons of variables which affect the spirit which is distilled. For instance, the type of barley, the type of yeast, the fermentation time, the fermentation vessel, the water chemistry, the water temperatures, the size and the shape of the still, the cooling method, how the spirit is cooled after it comes off the still, and the copper contact which the spirit has whilst being distilled. All of these things have their own small impact, some more than others, on what that spirit tastes like. Things like in brewing, uh, like making beer, the type of yeast you use is incredibly important. There are certain beers which are only that beer because of the type of yeast that's used. For instance, a lot of German brewers use a lot of wild yeasts, which impart that kind of funky German beer flavor. That's not necessarily something that's experimented with that often in whiskey, although I'm very happy to see that a lot of people are starting to get a little bit more into it, which is really cool, because it's making some really quite interesting spirits. Whilst talking about the size and shape of stills, you have distilleries like Glenmorangie, which really, you know, the Glenmorangie, which really tout the size of their stills as contributing to their light and delicate spirit. All of these small decisions kind of combine to make the fingerprint of that distillery. Now, what components of the spirit actually come from the distillation? I have a list of compounds which are formed during the distillation process, such as the long chain alcohols, phenols, esters, lactones, aldehydes, fusel oils, and compounds containing sulfur and nitrogen. All of those have different effects on the flavor of the spirit. A lot of those, once they go into a cask, will over time react with oxygen to convert into other compounds which have different effects on the flavor of the spirit. The cask itself is primarily made of cellulose, hemicellulose, and lignins. And during the toasting and charring process, a lot of other compounds convert into what are commonly referred to as vanillins, which is what imparts that vanilla flavor. So the time that the whiskey spends in the cask, 
those compounds which are in the spirit are changing. Some will propagate all the way through to the finished whiskey. Some of them will change and turn into other things. Another thing to take into account is peat. So peat or the PPM, the uh, phenolic parts per million, is measured in the kilned dried barley, not what makes it into the spirit. So if you take, for instance, Octomore, that's got a PPM in this particular bottle that I've got here. It's measured at 139 PPM. But then you have a whiskey such as Lefroig, which is measured at, I think it's between 45 and 50 PPM for the standard 10 year old. Now, if you were to taste them side by side, I think a lot of people would argue that the Lefroig has certain PT elements which are stronger than that of Octomore. And I really wouldn't say that Octomore tastes three times PT or thereabouts than Lefroig. That's a lot to do with those distillation choices. And obviously once a whiskey goes into a cask, those peat notes may change and adapt and bring out certain other flavors in the whiskey that weren't there before. But anyway, we're gonna stop talking about casks, the new make spirit that we're after. Now, when that new make comes off the still, it can be between 65 and 80%, depending on your distillation choices and where your cuts are made, ETC. A lot of the time it's watered down or diluted to around 63.5%. I'm pretty sure actually all of these apart from one are actually 63.5%, which is actually surprisingly drinkable. So enough talking, let's get down to tasting some new make spirit. Many distilleries, when you visit, will let you taste their new make spirit as part of the, sort of the tour, but a lot of them as well will just sell it. Um, in, usually in these small bottles, it's usually labeled spirit drink, which is uh, quite interesting. So we're gonna start off here with the King's Barnes. Good enough from a King's Barnes Glen Cairn. So this is a 20 centiliter bottle. King's Barnes is a lowland distillery, and this is bottled at 63.5%. Now, I will say I've drunk quite a bit of this in the past. I absolutely love this stuff. On the nose, very fruity. Tons of barley influence as well. You can really smell malted barley. It is hot. There is no getting away from that. It is very alcoholic, but it does not smell too far away from whiskey. on the palate straight away it is hot very alcoholic it sort of immediately evaporates but followed right behind that is tons of fruit very sweet very sticky i almost call it um i i, I quite often joke that they uh, they just distill raspberry frutella because quite honestly that is exactly what it tastes like to my palate anyway absolutely wonderful stuff i quite often say that for me for the character of the new make spirit defines the heart and the texture of a whiskey so to me the king's barns is not too thick and not too heavy but definitely heavier than others very tasty so next, we're gonna try Deanston. Now Deanston is a Highland distillery, although it's very close to kind of Edinburgh and Glasgow. Uh, again, this is bottled at 63.5% and this is an unpeated new make. Very similar to the King's Barnes right away on the nose. The nose is a little bit more spicy than the King's Barnes, a little less barley, and a little bit more kind of raw alcohol smell. On the palate, it is a lot less sweet than the King's Barnes was. A little bit more bitter, uh, a little bit more kind of 
dark spices but it's still really quite drinkable it's it's got a much spicier finish on the king's barns you get a really nice uh sweet fruity barley aftertaste this has got a much more dark toasted spicy bitterness next we're going to try the clyde side this is another super local distillery. Well, a lot more local than the uh, than the Deanston. This is only down the road in Glasgow City. Fairly new distillery. They uh, only just bottled their first whiskey. This again, lots of fruit, but this is much much brighter, almost menthol. That follows all the way through into the palette. Almost like very bright menthol notes. Not quite as sweet. Maybe a touch citrusy. On the nose, a bit more of that citrusy comes through. Yeah, a much brighter and a much lighter feeling spirit. Both the Deanston and the King's Barns have got a kind of weighty oiliness to them. Whereas this Clyde side, I mean, it's it's practically gone from my mouth. I've, I, it's like I've not drunk anything. And you've still got that hint of barley on the tail end of it. But yeah, this is a, this is a very different feeling spirit to the King's Barns and the Deanston. So now moving on, we're going to try the Bunahaven. This is super interesting. This almost smells salty. Very saline component to it. And a little bit of hay. Quite sweet as well. This is really interesting. It's got some very grassy notes, a little bit saline. This tastes, you can really see how this is Bunnahaven. For instance, let's look at the Bunnahaven 12. Like I can taste this in the Bunnahaven 12. If you kind of see it that way around, like I, I can taste how this becomes Bunnahaven 12. I, I don't really get that to the same extent that I do with the, uh, the King's Barnes, the Deanston or the Clyde side. This, especially seeing as the Clyde side that I've got back there is only three and a half years old, and the Bunner Haven that this turns into, you know, theoretically is the is the twelve year old. This to me tastes like it's going to be Bunner Haven. Get a little bit of black pepper on the tail end of that as well. This is a really interesting new make spirit. This has got that much heavier texture as well that um, we saw from the King's Barns and the Deanston. Now we're gonna try some Macmara new make. Now, some of you will know, I've reviewed them on the channel a few times already. This is called Vithund, which is Swedish for white dog, which is the name given to kind of moonshine and pre-whiskey whiskey in the States and other parts of the world. Now this is the only one I've got here which isn't bottled at 63.5%. This is bottled down at 46.1. So a lot of new make spirit is just bottled up at the same strength that it goes into the cask. Uh, this one I, I highly doubt they send it into the cask at 46%. This smells almost like fresh herbs sort of basil, cardamom, very menthol as well. This is very different again. This is very spicy, but fresh spices, like freshly toasted mustard seeds, cardamom. Loads more of that menthol as well, but it's a, it's a different sort of menthol. It's not quite as bright. It 
for those that have ever had Akvavit before, Akvavit, I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. It's an Icelandic spirit and it's made from the distilled ferment of birch sap very similar actually to the bjorks of birch sap wine that you'd find in sweden this has got a lot of those notes in it like very almost piney sort of fresh tree sap very much the same on the palate carries all the way through to the finish Afterwards, it leaves behind like a very resinous pine flavor. Now, finally, we are gonna try a peated new make spirit. And this is from the Lag Distillery on the Isle of Arran. So, as I say, this is the, this is the only peated new make that we've got here. And it certainly smells it. On the nose, it's got a ton of ashy bonfire very strong. I'm not really getting too much else. I mean, I'm getting a, there's definite barley sweetness, like a barley sugar sweetness underneath. But it's very fresh smoke. On the palate, it's initially very, very sweet. And then immediately behind that, you get waves of fresh smoke. Similar to if you were to pick up a piece of wood out the fire the morning after a bonfire, it's kind of that smell, like the smell of the smoke on your clothes the day after you've been camping. Coming back to it, it smells very vegetal as well. Not in a bad way by any stretch, but a similar note to that kind of resinous piney smell that we got from the Withund. This has got this has got that, but it manifests itself ever so, ever so slightly more vegetal. And still very, very sweet. So I would highly suggest you get out and try some of these new make spirits. It's very interesting, especially if you have a distillery that you particularly like to taste their whiskey and then taste their new make. In some instances, it's really, really clear to see and kind of marry up that the flavor of the new make with the flavor of the whiskey. I've had a few where, you know, it's really difficult to make that connection and kind of that gives you an indication of the kind of influence that certain casks have on that spirit. Fundamentally, I think it's incredibly interesting. Now, for people that are like super, super into whiskey, I think it's really interesting for them to experience, you know, what is really at the heart of their favorite drink. But anyway, that's enough from me. Thank you all very much for watching. If you've liked this video, please do hit the like button down below. And if you would like to support the channel, please do consider subscribing. You can hit the bell icon to be notified whenever I upload. And on that note, what have we got here? Oh, this is the uh, the Vithund, the Magmara. Slangevar.